Okay, let me get everything ready to go. Let's see here. Let's see. Hold on. Okay. Let's see if I can adjust the lighting a little bit. Maybe? Whoa, that's not what I meant to do. Sorry, guys. Much better, maybe ish. That's right in my face. Okay. Alright, let us get started. Load. It's still kind of being funky. Can't figure out the good. I need to get like an actual light sometime. The highlight of your life. I'm glad I can be the highlight of your life. I am so glad. Okay, let's see where we leave off. 420. I'm good. How are you, Huckstuff? Thanks for hopping on. So we're on second, 22nd corner. I asked you a question, Nakai. I shake my head to fend off the days and hold on. The teacher's looking at me as as is everyone else in the class. Oh, daydreaming, I see. Ah, oh, sorry, I wasn't paying attention. What's the distance between never mind, different question. Why are you here in this class? Oh to uh learn about physics. Yes, well no, but that's that but that's the answer I wanted to hear. To acquire knowledge is the secondary reason for you being in the school. The primary one is to learn the rules of society, the norms and ethics that govern your everyday life. You don't come to school for the classes, you come to interact with the other people there, your classmates who are your equals and teachers who are your superiors. You learn how to form social contacts and maintain them, in other words, how to be a part of society. The school itself is a microcosm of the entire society. Whoa. Uh, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not I don't want to answer that question. Locke was the one who realized that you know, school's not just a place for learning. And of all the kids you raised, you guys know that better than anyone else. He pauses. <laughs> not Jade, but yes, I agree, Kenji. Kenji, not Jade. He pauses for a moment and lets his eyes sweep over the class. See if the message sunk in. At the very least, it shut everyone up and got them to focus on him. Captivated either by his voice or the sudden change of topic from physics to the philosophy of education. However, my classes, as you so aptly put, are a place for learning about physics. He points me at the piece of chalk he's holding. Hmm. So no sleeping during class. Got it, Nakai? Yes, sir. <laughs> Shizune's like, hmm. From the corner of my eye, I catch Shizune's scowl and Misha's barely contained giggle. I seek deeper into my seat. Oh, how poor bro. After classes end, I'm the last one to leave the classroom. I close the door behind me and quietly make my way to the art room. Oh, Club time passes in relative peace and quiet. I sit in my usual seat next to Rin, but she doesn't seem to be in a talkative mood. What's wrong? She's even more distant than usual. Today we're going to draw a st <laughs> ring! <laughs> Put a ring on it! Today we're going to draw a still light. Oh, never mind. And it was not the kind of joke I intended to make. I am so sorry. <laughs> and get to choose me. <laughs> yes. And get to choose me either a vase full of fake flowers or an arrangement of rocks, sticks, and canvas. <laughs> oh, that's cute. I love that. The teacher encouraged us to gather around the preferred motif, emphasizing perspective, texture, and lighting as the key points as the key points of this exercise. I look at Rin to see if she prefers one of the subjects over the other, but she just tilts her head, signifying nothing. I love her facial expressions, they're so great. The club members quickly shuffle their chairs around the classroom to get closer to either the vase or the clutter. Rin and I both pick the flower vase, but only one of us seems to do any work. She's- oh. Oh no. Oh no. She's ignoring the Mia's assignment just like she suddenly started ignoring me. And has begun doodling something idly with her foot, not really even looking at what she's drawing. Oh no. Oh, I try to catch her gaze, but she's looking out the window. It's making me uneasy. 
Rin almost looks like she's asleep, but the way she's leaning back against the chair with her legs resting easily on the desk. She's now completely given up on the drawing. The more I try to relax, ignore her, and just be myself, the more it feels like I should ask if something's wrong. Mm. Oh, dear God. <laughs> After a club act- No! <laughs> After club activities are over. No! <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> the others have filed out. Ren gets up from her seat and marches over to me with unusual determination. I will do it. Oh my god, if you say a good girl, I'm gonna fight you, dude. The Mia, who is humming to himself while sorting a box of pencils of by hardness, turns around with a mixed expression of friendliness and incomprehension on his face. Hmm, what will you do, my girl? The gallery person. I can talk with that person. At least yesterday I thought I could. And today, too. I think I want to try it. I'm going to go all the way. The widest mob I've ever seen on any person's face lights up the teacher's features. He is almost literally beaming. Oh, wonderful. I have almost lost hope. Such a hard-headed girl you are. I knew that sooner or later you'd understand as well. I will call my good friends... Because <laughs> he's so creepy! <laughs> Sorry. I don't know how to pronounce that, and arrange a meeting. <laughs> you need to show her your work so she can estimate it. I've told her about you, but obviously you should talk face to face. Aww. Ew! No! This is so exciting, isn't it? <laughs> Shut up, though. <laughs> Nami is talking more to himself than to us, and walking, <laughs> walking in circles around his desk, waving his hands about wildly all the while. <laughs> He's like, <"Bleh." laughs> He picks up his cell phone from the breast pocket of his jacket and flips it up with a stylish movement. <sighs> Sorry, I'm looking for the number to call. While he switches, he notices to be staring and gives me a beaming thumbs up. I shrug back at him, doing my best not to look smug. The Mia <laughs> finds a <the> number <laughs> and makes the call, turning away from us and lowering his voice once it goes through. Even so, I can hear his excited tone. The call doesn't last long. Fabulous. Say is at the gallery right now. She said we can stop by right away if that's fine. This is most excellent. Do you have some kind of portfolio to show, Rin? She just shakes her head at the question. Oh. Oh. I'm excited then. Never fear. I've taken some photos of your paintings. We can bring those and maybe a couple originals with us. Those will be quite sufficient for now. There should be more recent ones around here in the back, right? He pulls out a folder full of photos out of a desk drawer, then charges towards the back where there's a small storage room and extra cabinets for all the materials and tools the art class and club will use. Ooh, that's a mouthful. He soon finds what he was looking for and crudely wraps two of paintings in some brown packing paper. Nakai, Nakai, would you carry these to my car? I pick up the two oil paintings. They aren't heavy, but they do make navigation somewhat cumbersome, and I follow Nomiya and Rin to the parking lot. Namiya has a pretty nice car and something I'd expect, not something I'd expect a high school teacher to ha drive. I wonder what kind of salaries they earn at Yamaku. The canvases are stuffed into the trunk where they just barely fit. As my t at my teacher's over-enthusiastic over prompting, I get in the car along with them. Rin answers my questioning stare with confirming nod and nonchalant shrug. I guess I've become sort of her assistant for now. For her now. Where is this hot lady? <clears throat> Namiya doesn't go light on the pedal. <laughs> the smooth ride takes about 10 minutes to bring us to the city center where we pull into a tiny parking lot and get out of the car. I pick up the paintings again looking around. It's just like any day in Japan, any city in Japan really. Ah. Some sti same style of buildings, people hurrying here and there, office workers sweating in their suits in the summer heat. Wide Tree-lined streets aren't something you see everywhere, though. Maybe they are the city specialty. Especially, whatever. It means it definitely has that feel of a city, which I thought I'd already forgotten. I feel immediately comfortable walking around. I haven't actually been here before. No, in that case, it's about time. It's a great city. Lots of wonderful folk around here. And most important of all, a vibrant cultural life. Ah, saves the place just around the corner. Let's see this hot lady. After turning around three more corners, Namiya stops in front of a door. There is a nameplate in big red letters over it. 22nd Corridor. Is this really the 22nd Corner? Of what? That's bothering me too. I mean, where to start counting? Which way do you count? Rennie gets worked up over the strangest things. Unlike me, Namiya ignores her completely and pushes the door open. The gallery is very clean looking and the air conditioning makes it cool, makes it cool and very comfortable. 
Let's see, say. The white walls and big windows facing onto the busy street make the whole place feel airy and bright. There's nobody around whom I can see, however. Most of the floor space is empty with only a few large tables and counter for furniture. There are paintings too, of course. A poster advertised in an ex exhibition, ex whatever, for an artist I've never heard of. Most of his work seem to be portraits of or landscapes done in a more traditional style than Rin's abstraction. Oh. I can see, yes. Summoned by the bell on the door, a lady who looks around, so maybe around Nomiya's age, cuts from around the corner. Yeah! <laughs> She's dressed in a sharp suit, her straight dark hair, and a perfect ponytail behind her head. A pair of flashy, expensive-looking eyeglasses frame her eyes. On second glance, I'm not so sure of her age anymore. She looks old and yet not actually old. Say hello! She clearly recognized the teacher, greeting him warmly. Oh, there you are, Shinichi. And so quickly, I take it that these two are your students? Indeed, let me introduce you. <laughs> this is Rin Tezuka, the one I spoke to you about, and the healthy-looking lad over there is Hisao Nakai. He takes a long, hard look at both of us, especially Rin. It feels like we're being evaluated, that a worth of some extra kind is being calculated for us. She's kind of, she's like, hmm, judging. Her eyes linger for a long time on Rin. On her eyes, her empty sleeves tied in knots, her posture. Say takes her first impression of Rin with an intensity I have not seen used by anyone else before. Once she's finished, she smiles. Pleased to meet you both. <laughs> exactly, she's like, hmm. My name is Sei Sionji, and I'm the owner of this gallery. Could I maybe offer you some tea? Oh, no, thank you. We're fine. Let's get down to business. I lay the paintings on a tabletop to give the gallery owner a better view, and Amiya pulls out his folder of photos. Oh, I'm scared. The old lady studies Rin's work carefully, absentmindedly brushing her cheek with her fingers while letting her gaze sweep over the paintings. Her eyes remind me of a bird of prey of some sort. They're so sharp and somehow very calculating. He takes the time slowly going over the painting in order without uttering a single word. I'm so scared. Even the chief looks very nervous. He's like, hmm. He tries to point out certain details and other things about Rand's work, but it seems like she's not listening. Oh my god. I'm so scared, guys. <laughs> I don't want Rin to feel bad. While well, Namiya and I keep looking at Say, trying to look for some hint of reaction on the gallery owner's face, Rin lets her gaze wander around the gallery space. Suddenly, she pipes up. Is this really the 22nd corner? <laughs> Say raises her gaze from the paintings to look at Rin, but doesn't answer. It's probably for the best. <laughs> she takes stock of Rin's slouchy posture and her dreamy eyes that are again moving nervously about. It is the most important question. The way Rin seems to be detached from a situation that's supposed to be very important for her annoys me just a little. I'm practically holding my breath here. God save! I am panicking! I have to say I've gone through all Nomiya's photos and expected the two oil paintings that hauled here. <laughs> he looks so she's like mm. She goes through all the material again, this time at a quicker pace. Finally she gives her verdict. I like it. Ooh! Aw. Though uh, yeah. Though if you don't mind me saying you're still a bit immature. Searching for your own direction, perhaps. She picks up one of the photos. So, let's look at this. I can't take my eyes off it. Like a little kitten playing around. That's what your art makes me feel, young lady. Thank you. I think nobody has said that before, I think. That's all Ren has to say. Something about what the gallery owner says and how she says it makes it sound patronizing to me, but I hold my tongue. Hmm. Anyway. What a wonderful imagination, though, isn't it? I've always said that Tezuka has a great eye for composition and color harmony. And technique. Technique! Remember, all these are done with her feet. Of course, we need to put some of the simpler ones on display too for the lay people, right? Say? She's like, <sniffs> the teacher snorts derisively. You know how those Philistines are. What do they understand about real art? They'd just be at loss of the extraction and themes here. Look at his face! He's like, go! <laughs> oh my god, he was so mad. He's like, mm. <laughs> But it'll generate more publicity, and that's good, isn't it? Say smiles gently at Namiya's <laughs> remark and turns back to the paintings. I wonder. The tight. Aww. I was excited to ask them with aww. I mean, even if I like it, I don't get the feel of a theme of cohesion. I don't know how to pronounce that. And really, who is best to such a young artist like the kid? What a butt. Oh, no, no, no. It's definitely doable. It's just if you get a few new pieces and touch up some old ones. I don't mind painting more. I'll do anything. It's a bit of a stretch. 
Trust me, I wouldn't have to come to you if I didn't Tezuka was ready. You can see it too, can't you? I know exactly what her kind is capable of, and you know too. Those words give the gallerous lady a pause. A hollow bottom look takes over her eyes for a moment, as if looking through her maybe past Nomiya. She says nothing, but her mouth becomes a tight, flat line as a stretch. Fine, the moment passes. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. Say sighs and takes a few steps, walking in a circle as if to help organize her thoughts. Mm. She takes another look at a photo of the painting she particularly liked, the one that made her call Rin a kitten. She places her hand over her mouth, lost for words. After a few moments, she shakes her head. I don't know what to say. After seeing... Oh, he's probably like, you little butt. After seeing you, dear, in this painting of yours, would you excuse us for a moment? I want to talk to your teacher in private for a bit. Ugh. Oh. Say so draws the art teacher aside. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Steely James. That was beautiful. Say so root when. Oh, my God. And they talk in hushed tones for a while. I can't hear what they are saying, but over her shoulder, I can see the lines around the corners of her mouth tighten as she motions with her hands in time with her words. She's like, Namiya, listen here. The expression on the face is, what kind of expression is it? I couldn't say. Once I've done discussing whatever... <laughs> yes. Hi! Discussing whatever they had to discuss, they give another serious look. I feel something that goes beyond mere words which is transpiring there. They walk back to us. Say looks seriously at Rin, her left hand reaching as it takes seats instinctively toward a pack of cigarettes that's lying on the table. She picks up the pack up and extracts one, looking at it absentmindedly as if only in her life she did so and puts it back. Finally, she locks. <laughs> That's bad. Finally, she locks out of this room, avowing her once more. Oh my God! All right, little kitten, I'm going to believe in you. I will just. Thanks, Rose. I appreciate it. I will display your paintings in here, but from what I can see, this is not enough. You don't really have a cohesive theme. You don't have enough of the good stuff. No! You're going to have to work hard to actually get something that we can put on the exhibit here. Ew. I know. It's a good thing my gallery is so small. Shut up! <laughs> Rin already spends much of her free time waking up with ass painting. How is it possible to work any harder? Oh no! She'd have to skip classes to do more than she already does, and how can anyone work that much? Silence falls in the gallery after my words. Say it looks at the art teacher who is looking con contemptibly at his star student. I look at all three of them confused. It's doable. What do you mean? I mean the school is special. The board puts great value on things such as this. I'm sure I could arrange some leave for her. It's not unprecedented by any means. I'll discuss it with their parents too, but they've been supportive. However, it might be a bit of a stretch to get working space for her out the school if she's not actually going to attend classes. Actually, I was thinking about this before. Do you use this place upstairs for anything? No, I don't. I haven't since back then. It's more like a landfill than a tailor, whatever now. Upstairs, I own a small, uh, how do you pronounce that? Altier? Uh, alt, whatever. <laughs> Rose, don't, no, I hate it. <laughs> uh, but it has been used for, goodness, it's been so long, hasn't it? Her eyes leap to Nomiya, who has a strange, mute expression on his face. He's so gross. Indeed, do you think? Even Nomiya, in all of his brashness, has trouble coming straight out with the question. Say, of course, sees through him and throws up her hands, sounding deeply. I guess I can't say no, can I? Very well. I'll lend you the use of the place as well, if indeed. It's not like I really... Oh, Kenji? Is that who you're thinking of? <laughs> oh my god, Kenji, that that dude. I can say no to that face, it's gross. Excellent, I knew I could count on you. Don't celebrate yet, it really is a mess, so don't be shocked when you first see it. <laughs> However, you can use it as you see fit. Since it's an out, I could, I, I'm struggling. It already has easels and things like that. You only need your own tools and materials and somehow clean it up a bit. It's not habitable, though, so I can't let you live there. I doubt your school or parents would allow that in any case. Okay. However, it's convenient to crash it overnight if necessary. I don't mind. 
<laughs> Most excellent, isn't it, Tezuka? He enthusiastically pats Rin on the shoulder, laughing in relief and happiness that all this good fortune landed on him personally. Say he smiles well, perhaps more amused by the old teacher's glee than anything else. Oh dear, Sunichi, this is really like back then. Are you sure we haven't all bitten off more than we can chew? <laughs> she looks at Rin, who seems to be oddly subdued despite all this. I hope it'll be worth it, kitten. God! She holds out her hand as a shake to Rin, but realizes the impossibility and quickly moves to pat her on the shoulder. Rin looks back at her silently, her eyes serious and impenetrable. At, like the dark of the night. Oh, I'm so scared, dude. Okay, let's see here. Let us save. Yes. Continue. Return. I. She's at. I'm kind of scared of her. She's kind of intimidating. I'm like, don't be mean to Rid. I mean, I get criticism, but like, calling her kittens a little like patronizing, like Hasao said. I'm like, why? <laughs> Rin applies for and thanks to the mere pressure of the principal, I'm sure, is granted leave for the rest of the term for exceptional extracurricular, extracurricular activities. She has to make up for it during summer vacation, but she doesn't seem to mind. Rin will still be able to eat and sleep at school. Of course, she doesn't have to go to classes. I'm not entirely sure if I envy her or not. It all makes you, it may, all makes you feel anxious somehow. It's the last day of school for Rin. I feel like I should send her off with a word of encouragement or at least say something. It was sort of due to my influence that she decided to dive headfirst into this after all. My class ended in a good 20 minutes earlier, so I walked down to the lobby and buy a can of juice and sit down on the bench to wait for Rin. I pull out a novel from my bag and search the place where I was. Time switches comfortably over the warm afternoon while I idly sip my juice and read a few chapters of the book. The plot doesn't seem to advance at all, but it's all the same for me. The bell rings at the end of the school day and students shuffle the club meetings or outside. Nobody notices me sitting on the bench with my nose in the novel. I keep watch for her Rin, but I don't see a familiar face or red tinted hair passing by. Where's Rin? I check my watch 20 minutes past the end of class when the lobby has all but emptied up people again. Even, even Rin should have already managed to get out of class, but either I missed her walking by or she never came downstairs. I'm so scared. Dude, I'm so scared. I don't want Rin to be sad. Perhaps she went to the art club room for some last minute things instead or got held back by a strict homeroom teacher. I haven't really waited that long, but having grown tired of it already, I decided to go find her myself. I stuff my book back in the bag and throw the nut empty juice can in the trash bin, then climb upstairs. The hallway is eerily quiet as there are no club rooms apart from the art room nearby. I check there first, but not even the teacher is in. Coming back towards the stairwell, I quietly knock on the door of 3 4 and push the door to peek in. Yellow sunbeams across the classroom, falling across the floor. The dusk and chalk floating slowly in the air make the light almost palpable. The entire room bays in the gentle light shining through the windows, washing the shadows away. Only one person designed the classroom. Oh, baby! <laughs> Rin sits in what I assume was her seat next to the window on the third row. Her head is r rests against the desk. Oh. Oh. I wonder if she slept through it at all. Apparently not even Emmy had the heart or maybe the capability to wake her up. I close the door quietly, walking past the neat, even rows of desks, I go over to where she sits. Rin? My mouth is suddenly so dry that the word comes out in a tiny whisper. Oh, And she doesn't answer, so I set my bag down on the floor next to hers and lean over to look at her face. Rin's eyes are peacefully closed. <laughs> I'm so scared. No, shut up. Hi, Jeffrey. The long eyelashes projecting thin shadows onto her cheeks. Her mouth is slightly open, letting me hear the quiet sound of her breathing. <laughs> her unusually messy hair is even more so today, lying in complete disarray over half of her face and forehead. Her bag is lying at her feet like a forgotten rag doll. A few books and pens have fallen out her, of it near her seat. The scene makes me smile a little. Oh my god! <laughs> I touch Rin's head lightly, sweeping a few stray hairs off her ear. Her hair feels warm against my palm. Oh. Rin stirs and I retract my hand on reflex, feeling embarrassed for touching her so casually. 
She looks so vulnerable like any sleeping person. <laughs> beautiful? You look beautiful? It's impossible not to feel fondness towards her. I sit on the desktop of whoever is in front of Rin, <laughs> then draw the window slightly open to get some fresh air in. Hopefully it'll make her wake, <laughs> wake up. I won't need to resort to cruder methods. She, oh, it's, oh my gosh, nice. She doesn't wake up, but I didn't really expect her to. Looking at her makes me feel tired as well. To be honest, I wouldn't mind a quick nap either, but content myself with leaning against the large window. The glass is warm against my ear and cheek as I do this face west toward the setting afternoon sun. The afternoon light is slowly melting into Rin's auburn hair. <laughs> right? I'm like tossing and turning in all these weird, weird dreams. Softening her outline so that she seems to be fading into her surroundings. The minute twitches of her muscles, the mind, minute twitches of her muscles, her hair swaying in the air current, the even rhythm of her breathing, it all gives a strong impression of a dreaming girl. Like all sleeping people, Rin looks like she's away from the world in some distant dream country. Excuse me. With her, it doesn't feel so obvious that she would ever come back. She seems so detached from her surroundings even when she's awake. In fact, she has the same kind of air around her when. The resident hits my consciousness without warning. Rin sometimes looks like that when she is painting. Her focused expression gives the same feeling of being on the other side of some imaginary gap as looking at her sleeping face does. I feel a pain in my chest. Oh. There's no way I can close that gap to be on the same level with her. It hurt, <laughs> right? It hurts, even though I know that it's impossible for any two people to truly understand each other. But Rin, <laughs> good question. She's almost literally in another world when she's talking about art, thinking about art, or making art. It's a world that I or anyone else really can't share with her, just like the world of dreams. Rin doesn't show any sign of waking up, so I'm faced with the decision to either rouse her myself or wait for her to wake it on her own. I choose the latter. Waiting is something I am good at. I found that during my hospitalization. But even the hospital war is more lively than the school after classes are over. The only sound in this place are the loud ticking of the clock above the door and a distant voice of students on on the grounds. My back! A genuine summer breeze blows inside from the window I cracked open. Full of warmth and carrying the sense of light. This is so pretty, dude. I'm looking outside to see where it came from, but I'm dazzled almost instantly. The window glass seems to trap all the sunlight within, making it painful to look that way. Oh my god, my eyes! I can glimpse to the window of the darks to the west of the trees and the wall around the campus against the setting sun's radiance. As I turn back to watch Rin, she stirs again. What? A single tear worms down from the corner of her eye, slowly making its way across her face before it falls onto the desk. Oh, it's tiny, barely a drop, <laughs> but it captivates me. Another tear follows the first and then the third. A feeling of anxiety overcomes me, petrifying me on the spot. Oh, it's so strange, seeing Rin's face peaceful as she sleeps, at the same time as tears stream down her cheeks, wetting the wooden desktop she rests her head on. I don't know what to do, so I do nothing and just watch the tears roll one by one down her face. I wonder what she's dreaming about. <laughs> Rin wakes up after one final flinch, perhaps because of the tears. She sits upright and yawns excessively. It looks like her jaw might dislocate. Ah. She notices my presence, but her reaction is more like the lack of any reacting at all. It's just an acknowledgement. No sort of gasp or anything. Hello. Good morning. She's so groggy she can't even return my smile that I somehow can't stretch to be entirely honest. Ah. Rin notices the wet cheeks and quickly, quickly wipes them on the shoulder of her shirt. It seems like she isn't surprised or flustered by them. You cried in your sleep. A bad dream? No. It's nothing like that. It's something I've learned to do from other people. It's a fu- oh. It's a funny story. I'll tell you later. On second thought, not really that funny at all. I guess I won't tell you. Did you want something or you just come to watch me sleep? Uh, I wanted to see you after classes. Oh, well, it's after classes now and I'm seeing you right here. Yeah, I just wanted to say good luck or something. I figured that coming weeks are going to be a lot of work for you. Thanks. Rin yawns again, yawns again and blinks a few times. I really, I feel weird. Didn't really sleep much last night at all. 
butterflies in your stomach? What? No. I mean, yes. I know what that means. Butterflies don't really feel so good now. It'll be fine. You are so confident. Something will bite you in the ear. I look forward to it. I think I have to go. I promised Mr. Sarzoni, Mr. Sarzoni, whatever, that I'd go there straight after school and now is after school. Is it okay if I come by sometime? I'm guessing you're planning to work long hours, so I prefer you, if you prefer to avoid distractions. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's okay. It's not a distraction. Not like Emmy. Don't bring her with you, though I wouldn't like that this time. I told her to stay away. I see. All right, then. Rin stands up and Sally walks to the door while with me following behind. <laughs> Emmy! The school's empty hallways devoid of the usual crowd of students feel very lonely. Ugh. It's only a few hours since school ended, but the building seems to be all but deserted. Our footsteps are all that intrudes upon the stillness of the hallways. The change is sudden, but it shows how the building is just an empty shell. <laughs> Dad thought it soon the teachers liven it up. Right? It's like the school has become a private world for just the two of us, a desolate place filled with silence and chalk dust. I'm going to change. She says out of the blue eye walk down the stairs from the third floor, and it makes me wonder how she feels this challenge that lies ahead of her. That's what people must do sometimes. That's the last thing we say to each other day, even though there's so much of it we could talk about. <sighs> and even those words drown in the all-encompassing silence, disappearing into the stagnant air as if they were never said. This is like making me want to cry again. Holy crap. The next Monday is marked by a strange emptiness, emptiness that grips me, caused by the nausea that I won't be able to see Rin whenever I want to anymore. The hollow feeling is a little bit disconcerting, but I make it to the afternoon all the same. My last classes were terrible. It's not that the lesson is bad, it's, it's however boring, it's so hot in the classroom that I feel like I'm melting. The air conditioning is either broken or turned off so the windows are open. It makes no difference when the air outside is completely still. Only the tripping of cicadas carries inside. The sweltering heat permeates the room. Students and teachers alike are in the most almost delirious state. I just want to stand up and walk out here without caring what the teacher or anyone else says. I can see I'm not the only one with these thoughts too. Next to me, Misha is seriously holding her skin up a bit and fanning her hair with her in her notebook. Only Shizune seems to be as cool as always, sitting with her back perfectly straight, which I should do. Arms folded on her chest, her eyes fixed on the equations, scrawled on the backboard. <laughs> Come on! Where's the artwork of that? I keep shooting yearning glasses at my watch, but it doesn't help the time go any faster. It's funny. I remember how badly I wanted to get out of the hospital and go back to school. Now all I can think of is the upcoming summer vacation and freedom from classes and homework. Perhaps it's human nature to think only of the situation at hand. Finally, the bell rings. Relieved, my classmates and I burst out into the hallway already crowded by students from our neighboring classes. I spot, oh, Emmy! Hey there. She smiles sweetly, clearly happy to see me. Hassel, what's up? Is your classroom super hot too? Yeah, it is. I thought I was going to melt in there. Nothing else is really happening now. Feeling a bit weird now that Riz on a great adventure, whatever you want to call it. Emmy's face cracks in a wider smile. She jumps up and down enthusiastically. She's so cute. Look at her. Isn't it great? I'm so happy for her. I bet everyone will like her painting. She'll be so alive and make piles of money. Yeah, I'm sure it'll work out great. I'm totally sulking at her, though. She hops hanging and places her hands firmly on her hips, even letting a little anger seep into her voice. <laughs> it doesn't quite have the impact she's totally hoping for, but I say nothing. Why is that? She said that she doesn't want me to go see her. Oh yeah, she mentioned that I guess she prefers to not be distracted. I can understand that. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't think I'm that much of a distraction. Besides, I'm sure she'll forget about sleeping and eating properly if someone's not there telling her to do it. Sometimes she's like that. I guess completely fixed it on whatever and drops everything else. It really makes me worry, you know. Is she going to be... Oh, she looks so sad. Is she going to be alright? Such friendship. I wonder... I wonder if she thinks that. Oh! <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not the case at all. 
I may shake her head, looking at me. I'm sure she, I'm not sure if she's joking or not. She has these weird ideas about a lot of stuff. Things make sense to her in a totally different way than they do to me. I can't even remember all the weird stuff she talks about over all this time. I don't think Rin does either, really. <laughs> she's not the type who would forget her own head. If it was, she's the type who would forget her own head from one attached to her shoulders. That's why I just can't leave her alone. Right? She's so cute. Oh, Emmy, I mean, you're adorable. Is that weird? She leans against the wall, managing to look distraught yet so cheerful as always. I get a strange feeling about it as though I were talking to two people at the same time. How would I know? Everyone's weird in some way, but if that's yours, it's a very nice way. At least I can understand what you're talking about, unlike Rin. Most of the time, I have no idea what's going on inside her head either. Emmy giggles, nodding in agreement. I think it's okay even if you don't understand her. That's how she usually is. Emmy stands up straight there, brushing the hem of her skirt and straightening the waistline. She laughs awkwardly. <laughs> wow, we ended up talking pretty seriously. What's up with you, Hassel? Why did you bring this up? Oh, sorry. I didn't really mean to get into this sort of discussion either. I just... I don't know. I've had this weird feeling lately about Rin. I don't know why. I feel a bit guilty bringing up something like this for no reason except my anxiety. It'll be fine. Don't worry about it. I love her little blush. It's so cute. Something Emmy clutches my wrist and twists it so she can see what time is on my watch. Oh, damn. This late already? I should really go. There's a meeting with the rest of the track team at the field. It's not going to be fun in this heat. We're going to sweat like pigs, but I promise I'd be there. Bye bye! <coughs> she skips downstairs, leaving me wondering if, I, if what I said or what Wynn said rather hurt her or not. Maybe what Emmy herself said hurt her the most come to that. So, in the end, even the person closest to Rin is just as far apart as her as anyone else. Everyone else. I wonder if her, Rin herself ever feels that distance. I felt like I was drifting away from the world too during my hospitalization. I felt anxious and depressed and even now sometimes I still do, but I fight against it with all I've got. If Rin has been on that side of the divide for her whole life, I can't imagine how she could not be lonely. Perhaps she truly is different. I refuse to belong to the other place, but maybe she's found comfort there. Like Emmy, I have a club meeting of my own, so I head straight to the art club room at the end of the hallway. Only a few members are present today, so the mood is even more laid back than usual. Rin is off working on her ex exhibition project. Ex I cannot say that word for the... But I wonder if the rest are simply just playing hooky defeated by the heat. I half acidly sketch something with a piece of graphite, but do a poor job of it. My fingertips are turning pitch black from holding the graphite and smudging on the paper accidentally and on purpose. I've improved a little, but, li but Rin's level is still far beyond my reach. <clears throat> Jeez. Eventually, Nomiya comes in and walks his way around the room, checking out what we're doing and giving comments on the works in progress. <laughs> He's like... <laughs> he stops behind me and bends closer to look at my poor sketch. Try to take a few pointers from Tezuka, have you? Uh, well, I've looked at how she does, but haven't really asked for advice, no. Let's see here. He casually picks up the piece of graphite from my hand and lightly draws some faint, barely visible lines on my sketch. To those places that need improvement. <laughs> I already feel frustrated about not seeing the obvious flaws before, but with a couple of careless seeming flicks of the wrist, Mamiya has made them plain as day. Straightening up, he throws aside his glance at the seat where Rin usually sits. Such a nostalgic feeling, almost like a bird flying from the nest. I'll miss Tezuka when she graduates. It begins from here, you know. Really makes my eyes a little misty. Do you really think she has the chance to make her big break with that? Okay, I'm not gonna try that word. Mia turns up, turn, turn looks up, turns looks up for my sketch. Um, adjusting his glasses, he rubs his chin, looking. <laughs> I disagree with both of you guys. <laughs> Contemplate. <laughs> Why not? It's not like he's going to have an overnight smash hit or anything, but getting the word out there is very important. Connections are pure gold. Maybe the most important thing to gain is she has to become an artist. <laughs> oh my gosh. Word of mouth is very powerful in these circles. <laughs> she has some advantages, like her young age and technique. You know, the feet. People would naturally be naturally curious about her extraordinary things like that. His words have an unpleasant ring to them. Is it snowing outside? Ew. 
Sorry, okay. Isn't that just exploiting her disability to make her more popular? It sounds fishy! Ah, now, now. It's not like that. Think of it from another perspective, like an artist. <laughs> Would you rather have Nezuka hide herself completely from the public view, as if her condition was something shameful? So people would call it exploitation if we, if we promote that aspect, or discrimination if we hide it. All consider we're just being honest about it. There's nothing wrong with that, right, my boy? <laughs> I guess so. Brilliant! It's true that disability always has some sorts of implications in society. Often nasty ones, but brushing things under the carpet <laughs> won't help at all. I'm sure Stay will handle her side of the issue with delicacy. I've known her since art school and she's most reliable. Why is she going so far for Rin's sake? Because it's you who asked? Oh, she has her own reasons, too. Trust this old man. She's more kind-hearted than she looks. Ah, uh, but don't let her know I said that. Are you- okay. Ah, oh, my eye itches! He gives a big wink and covers his mouth with hands to push the remark back in. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the curious way Miss Sidney <laughs> I looked at Rin almost the entire time during our visit to the gallery. <laughs> it was like that woman was trying to imprint everything about her into memory. Or maybe it was Rin reminding her of something else. Her eye is just so bad. Most I say simply adores young people with a passion for art. Her gallery specializes in this very thing, bringing up-and-coming talent to the public. It's a perfect fit for someone like Tezuka. I don't even know if she really wants to become a career artist, so, but I guess that would be the logical next step. I don't have the faintest idea. Like they say, a teacher can only show the door. It's a student who has to walk through it. An old tire saying was still quite true. He leaves the chat with a pair of second-year girls working on some watercolors. Even if you said that cliche thing, it feels to me that Nomiya is trying to prod Rin through a certain door in particular, but I can't blame him for that. I literally shoved Rin towards that door with my speeches about wasting opportunities and whatnot. Nomiya feels like it's time for him to let Rin test her own wings. He has absolute confidence in this endeavor. I wonder why I can't shed the anxious feeling I have inside me. It shouldn't have anything to do with me. Maybe I'm just b bothered by exactly that. I don't really have any part in this. I would... I would like to be a part of Rin's life and her a part of mine, like friends should be. <laughs> That's what she called us. I wonder what she really meant. I feel like I'm so far apart from her, even when I'm not. It's the same as with Rin and Emmy. I can't understand her. What am I for her? Oh, shoot. Oh, my God. What? <laughs> exactly. How do I answer this guy? I hate... I don't know what to answer, guys. What should I answer? What should I answer? What should I answer? Oh, shoot. I want to understand her. I, I think I made a bad choice there. In the end, even though we were made friends with each other, I don't really feel that like we've gotten any closer. How can I call him my friend if I can't understand her? The Mia's boisterous, la boisterous laugh fills the quiet afternoon just as the club meeting ends. He pats one of the girls in the back encouragingly. I think about all the things that have led me to this point. All of the things I've shared with Rin during the few weeks I've been at Yamaku so far. I'm so... <laughs> what a good ending! <laughs> I understand so very little in the end, but I'm sure of one thing. <sighs> if I want to keep going with what I have with Rin, what I have... I have to throw her, myself into whatever will come out of this project along with her. I turn my gaze back to the black mess of a sketch and the near invisible guiding lines the tree church drew over it. No pattern emerges, nothing that could take me farther than I am. I put the graphite down on the table and think hard and honestly, but I really want. I'm so, I don't want a bad ending! I'll be so sad if I get a bad ending! I will literally cry! I'll cry either way, but I really don't want a bad ending! The next day I take the bus into the city. It goes twice an hour starting in the morning. Just know what? Just know what? <sighs> Guys, I'm gonna panic! But yeah! Yeah, but that one is gonna make me sad! <laughs> yeah, but it's gonna make me sad! 
The ride takes considerably longer than the one Namiya gave us in his car. I slowly read the book as the bus makes its rounds through the suburbs, pausing almost every stop to pick up someone or let them out. Eventually, make it to the last stop at the city center. The city is fair sized but not too large and seems too quiet. You want me to get the bad Hanukkah ending? I'm so scared! <laughs> Nonetheless, I enjoy the atmosphere. Oh my god. <laughs> well, it turned me! It was gonna turn me into! I cried everything! Despite being slightly directionally challenged, I find my way from the bus station to the gallery without too much effort, and soon I find myself staring at the big litter saying 22nd corner. <laughs> I'm scared! Inside, the gallery owner is intently studying a large painting hanging on the wall, a portrait of an old man. Good afternoon. She turns around to look at me and smile of recognition spreads on her lips. <laughs> Sick, like, don't spoil it in case I do get it, but I'm honestly hoping I don't. Oh, aren't you the young man from the other day? Shouldn't she suit it? Hassan, was it? That's how I feel, Jeffrey. I don't want a bad ending. That's right. Good afternoon, Miss Sarjoni. Please just say I don't want to feel any older than I am. You know, I'm so glad that even young people show interest in art nowadays. <laughs> it's so refreshing. What brings you here? Surely you aren't just a courtesy visit all the way from your school. Ah, I actually came for Rin. I was just hoping to see how she's doing. Oh, is that right? Well, then you need to step back outside. You see, the, it's actually at the next door on the right down the street and up the stairwell. Just climb the stairs to the top floor. There's only one door there. You can't miss it. Nice! But I don't want a bad ending, guys. I'm gonna panic. I give Sam my thanks, exit the guy, and locate the door she was talking about. It leads to a dark cell that reminds me of the stairs leading to the roof of the school building. The stairs are steep, and even though it's only a few five, five floors, my breathing gets heavy before I reach the top. Don't have a heart attack, dude. An unassuming wooden door waits me there. It's unlocked, so I knock and enter. The Altia is really just one big room with the ceiling lower at one end than the other because the roof is on the building is gabled. There is a huge skylight in the ceiling that acts as the main source of light for the room, bringing in the sunlight that reflects off the white painted walls. I suppose it's good to use natural light for art. There isn't much in the way of the interior decoration. No surprise since the room seems to be, have been used as storage for a while. Nice. <laughs> All kinds of boxes and office furniture are scattered around the place. This room... <laughs> the room is dusty since not been up... Uh, he's, isn't he playing? You feel like he should play creepy games. I can see that someone has made some effort to connect a little, but it's far from immaculate. Oh, Rin stands in the middle of the room with her back to me, staring at a half painted canvas on the easel. <laughs> okay, I see. Not working on it, just staring and moving. She wears what must be a second or third, or third hand denim overalls over the standard school uniform shirt, much like the one I'm wearing. I am struggling, but they look pretty worn and they're covered in paint splatters. From the way they seem to be loose or tight in place, I'm guessing they weren't originally Rins. Right? Exactly. Hi. Hello. Rin doesn't judge my showing up as worthy of turning around, saying maybe something that isn't more than just a mechanical reply to my greeting, smiling anything. She keeps on doing whatever it is she's doing, probably some weird creative thing inside her head. Maybe, perhaps I should have expected as much. So I make another attempt at conversation. This is a pretty cool place. Big, too. It is. Say so I can use this as much as I like. I even have my own key. So how's the work going? Oh, she doesn't answer for a while. I begin to answer. She's a, I begin to wonder if she's already forgotten the question. I'm so scared. As a cloud drifts over the building, uh... Shadowing the light pouring in from the skylight, the change in Rin's surrounding seems to wake her up. I don't know. It's like a huge ball. I don't really know which one is on the right one. But how would she grip how would she grip it? How would she grip the It's really huge. It's the hugest thing ever. Like a mountain growing inside of me. Like I swallowed a mountain whole. It's going to be hard, I think. Really very hard. I try to listen for undercurrents of stress or certain uncertainty in her voice, but I don't pick up anything like that. Why are you here? Her tone is not as unkind as the directness of the question would make it seem. Well, you said I'd be fine if I came to visit, so here I am. I guess it's not for any real reason, but I thought you might have some comparisons or maybe some. Hassau. 
Can you be quiet for about 15 minutes? Maybe 10 is enough. Five definitely is not. You can talk afterwards. Her tone is sharp. sharp. Nothing like I've ever heard from her before. There is no command, no annoyance or anger, but her voice perceives me all the same. All right. With the silence of falls, anxiety creeps back into my heart. I wonder if it was a mistake to come here. Murmurs of traffic filter in from outside and start to feel more and more uncomfortable. All my thoughts keep finding themselves returning to certain things that I've been swirling relentlessly in the back of my mind for some time now. I feel like those thoughts will surface out of the temp tempestuous sea of my mind whether I want it to or not. I'm desperate to divert my focus, I fix it on Rin's back my mind races. I don't think I've ever seen anyone's back so intently before. Her neck hidden by copper cut hair which is again in complete disarray. The relaxed yet rigid posture reminded me that Rin's physical appearance often tends to be as awkward as her various trains of thought. The gaunt, delicate shoulder blades visible through the thin white fabric of her shirt. The contours of her hips curving down to her thin thighs. It pisses me off. Really does she ever seem to be looking at me whether literally or figuratively? I, on the other hand, am always watching her back both literally and figuratively. Whenever she is painting, whenever something catches her fluttering attention, whether I don't force her to make her listen to me. I can't reach to her. I'm so- Dude, what's going on? Ren's heart is uncharted territory. Data swatters the blank areas on the map. The edge of the world? If I went too close, I wonder if I would fall off. What do I think of her? Sometimes she's aloof and distant and it annoys me. It sounds like- Argh! Don't be angry! At other times, her passion for the things she thinks worthwhile shines through and inspires me. I can't understand her. So I like her and consider her my friend. I suppose part of friendship is putting up with the eyes of people you call friends. <laughs> I thought he said he was patient. I have to admit, there's a lot of putting up with Rin. What does she think of me? I have no idea. I, last week I thought she might have liked me romantically, what with that kiss and all. <laughs> I forced me to ponder my own feelings too. This week I'm utterly confused. What would you do if I told her I liked her in that way? I wonder if I really do. Damn, I can't make sense of even my own thoughts anymore. It must be contagious. Even if I said a thing like that, would it matter? Nothing affects Rin. Nothing. I'm done. I find her turn around now, staring straight at me. It unnerves me. I try to remember what, or rather, or we, or rather, I were talking before she crossed that time out. Oh, right. I just came to. I don't know. You still can't finish your sentences? It's not that. Fine. She retreats from the conversation, slipping away from me once again. She doesn't return to panic, but sense keep, keep looking at me with the empty poker face of hers. I wanted to talk about some stuff. I've thought a lot about things. What things? Like what happened last week and so on. What happened? I get the feeling she's playing with me. Why? I have no clue. It's not the game she's playing with my head. I'm pretty sure she doesn't deliberately try to screw with people. Maybe it's just my own mind playing tricks on itself. Still, Rin feels like a puzzle in the form of a girl. I, f I feel attracted to it, compelled to solve it, the overly rational part of my brain refusing to let me give up. I, I feel like I hit the wrong course, the wrong choice. I can't leave her alone. I would never have believed I could be this obsessive about something. Why do I hesitate so much to keep running in circles around her? I don't have to do that. I already decided what I want to say. Rin. Saying her name with an intention like this gives my mouth dry, makes my mouth dry, as if my subconscious is fighting against what I'm going to say next. I'm feeling I'm going to lock up any moment now. Rin looks up from her paint-covered toes and stops wriggling them as if there is anything that deserves them curiously now. The hard stare of her dark green eyes is a little important. I like you. <laughs> I lock up any reactions like a slap to the face. So, um, I mean, I like to like you more as more than a friend. What is more? The slow, hesitant words coming from between her strawberry-colored lips are not the ones I was waiting for. Neither are the people to puzzle answers that I've been expecting, actually. <laughs> I feel myself blushing heavily as a par from the course of this kind of st in this kind of situation. What is more? <laughs> My heartbeat sounds like a percussion orchestra on drugs. <laughs> Rin's faux innocent and query feels like I'm being grilled over hot coals. You know, like romantically and... No. <gasps> <laughs> Rin turns around, give me the cold shoulder as she turns looking at her painting. I'm saving. I'm gonna have a heart attack, just like Hassau. Holy shit. <sighs> I 
She makes a <laughs> she makes a move to pick up her brush with the lies forgotten on the floor and besides it gets at the last moment. I can't talk about that kind of thing right now. So don't talk about that kind of thing, please. We are friends, right? So you can do that. Silence is words behind Oh my god, oh my god! I want to say something but my mouth refuses to move. There's no way I can retain my dignity. <sighs> Rin finally picks up the brush like giving an explanation for her behavior. Maybe there was something in her voice that gave way some emotion, but I couldn't say what. Her shoulders up low and calmly as her foot works the, in the canvas in front of her. She won't let me see her face, and I know it. <laughs> Feeling the weight of my heart grow heavier, <laughs> I stand up to leave, but I can't stay here any longer today. It's like I have opened Pandora's box by stepping over some line that Rin didn't want me to cross, and she had to turn me down. I walk across the squeaky floor to the door leading to the stairwell. <sighs> Rin's quiet voice stops me my tracks and I'm about to open the door. Hassau, my hand still on the brass door and I was waiting for me to turn it or withdraw. Yeah? Will you come tomorrow? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> I don't want to stop. I'm going to keep going. This is like, oh my god, I'm on the edge of my seat at what's going to happen. This is... I don't care about school! <laughs> oh no. After a night of bad sleep, I go through the day almost, almost on automatic. I put my uniform on mechanically, do my schoolwork mechanically, eat my lunch mechanically, apply to the teacher. <sighs> my mind feels blank and overcrowded at the same time. And I can't. <laughs> I can't even begin to unravel the tangle of feelings I've gotten myself into. I spend the bus trip staring, staring out the window, thinking about these things. As a result, by the time I <laughs> I'm feeling completely exhausted, expecting awkwardness to quietly knock on the door before entering. I spot Rin at the center of the small clear area in the room working on a painting. She doesn't acknowledge my arrival in any way. Hi. I came, as promised. Rin snaps her head to my direction immediately while she waits for me to say something and locks the cold gaze of hers on me. <sighs> Although I'm sure my own face can't hide my feelings, Rin's expression as I expected and neutral as always. The cloud is slightly absent mind. Darkness in her eyes is like a wall standing between me and her. Sorry, it's, it's snowing. It's making me angry. Okay. <sighs> it is the first awkward time between us that is truly awkward. Yesterday, both of us said something we couldn't take back, and there's no way it can be undone. I want to say something, but Rin forbid me from doing so. I can't even begin to guess what she's thinking, but I'm feeling the pressure of her light -lit lightless eyes on me, compelling me to break the silence without saying the thing I wanted to say. Sorry guys, I just breathed into the mic really loud. To my horror, I find that I can't find any way to start a conversation. It's as if I've completely lost the ability to speak with her. Um, just keep working if you're in the middle of something. I'll just sit down here. <laughs> Rand nods wordlessly at me and picks up the brush from the floor with the toes of her right foot. I sink into a worn out sofa, picking up a book from my bag and opening it to where I stopped last night. I can't really concentrate on it, but it's better than doing nothing. The two of us are so close to each other, together in the same room even. And yet, we're both off doing our own thing as if we were miles apart. I can't help but wonder about this natural situation. Why did I come here? Because she asked me to do yesterday, of course. However, it looks like there's absolutely no need for me to actually be here. It makes me feel awkward at first. But as I recall, the previous signs have quietly passed with Rin. I settled down try to tune in that same kind of mood I was in back then. Time stretches and slows down. The pages of my book rustle each time I turn them. After maybe a half an hour or one hour, I must bring back to my complete surprise. Hassel, yeah? Are you my friend? It's an echo of yesterday, I know it, so even Rin can't just push us out from her mind. Cut off guard answer, honestly. I don't- yeah, of course I am. Don't worry about stuff like that. Come on. Okay. She doesn't say anything farther. I feel happy somehow. Several chapters later, I mark my spot, close the book, and put it away in my bag. Getting up from the sofa, I see that Rin's made considerable progress on her painting. I take a look at it for a bit. It's still not quite finished, I suppose. It looks great. It's bad luck to come out and finish paintings. Oh! After that, I quietly leave the studio and catch the bus taking me back to school. I don't want to stop! <laughs> oh my god, this is so intense. Oh no. Life settles into some sort of vague, undefined norm. I visit Rin whenever I can, but each time it's as strange as the first. 
It mostly consists of, it consists mainly of me watching Rin at work or just reading a book on the couch while she works. We barely talk at all. Long, quiet evenings stretch over the last weeks of June. I sit on the couch in the altar, listen to the quiet rustle of Rin's brush in my own heartbeat, trying to make sense of the former and forget about the latter. I am a silent visitor in this place, a ghost. At some point, I start thinking that my presence is meaningful to Rin somehow, but I never end up asking her about it. I don't bring up the forbidden topic anymore either, try to stop thinking about it altogether. It's hard to do so and doesn't get any easier with the passage of time. My heart aches every time I look at the awkward figure of the girl I sat I liked it, who refuses to acknowledge it. I still can't seem to find the right words to talk to you about anything at all. But I find quiet solace in observing her from nearby. The distance between us doesn't feel that here's when I can be close to her, even if it's like this. Rin works like a demon. There is barely a moment when she's without a brush between their toes or not walking in circles around a current work in progress, <laughs> estimating from every angle and distance. So sad. She seems to completely taken over by her will to work and to change herself into the sort of artist she believes to be worthy of the trust and the means they have placed in her. Piles of sketches, works in progress, tubes of oil paint, and brushes slowly begin to crowd the small altar, making it even messier than it was before when acquired the right to use it. I offer to help her clean her up every now and then, but each time she refuses. It dawns me that in her mind the room was not in utter chaos. Rather, her system of keeping track of everything is so elaborate only Rin herself can make sense of it. She knows exactly where everything is. From the tiniest brush to the half empty tube of crimson that's a perfect shade for any for some fiction in progress. Rin walks from one painting to another, looking at them as if not remembering that she made them. She talks to herself for to the paintings, even when I'm present, always just quiet enough that I can't make out the words. Every day, Rin pours herself onto the canvas for hours on end, squeezing every bit of her ability and even her soul to make some good on that promise she made me or herself. Oh. Black marks appear beneath her eyes, a sure sign that she's skipping safe in favor of painting. I'm somewhat surprised to see her at school a few times. I never go and say hello, though, as that somehow I feel I'd break the silent magic of the evenings we share at Altair. <laughs> I base. <laughs> huh? Eyes, bay. <laughs> Sometimes Say comes by when I'm there. She gives me a certain kind of look when she shows up. I think she doesn't like that I'm always hanging with Rin up there, but she never says a word about it. She isn't quite full of praise for Rin's work as Nia, but she's visibly impressed nevertheless. <laughs> However, when she turns her eyes from the wonderful works of art to look upon the little red-headed girl that made them, a sudden deep, dad, deep sadness blows up to the surface of her expression. I can't explain it, she never talks about it. June turns into July almost without warning. End of term exam loom dangerously out close, but all I can think of is Rin. I feel like a sleepwalker at school. <laughs> Forward only to the next time I get to visit the silent place above Say's gallery. After Rin refuses my attempts at directly helping with her work, I try to figure out other ways to help her. It finally dawns me that she isn't eating properly. My course of action decided I stop at the convenience store before going to catch the bus downtown on my next visit to the studio. I feel very energetic as I open the door to the altar and greet Rin. I brought you some fruit. You need vitamins and actual food after all. Do you even eat up here? I do eat. If I didn't eat, I couldn't paint. Oh my god. Then why don't you eat a couple of these? I shake the bag full of ripe oranges in my hand and I'm employed to temper and taking a break. Oh, and in my surprise, to my surprise, she actually lays her brush down and walks over to me to see what I had brought. Her expression doesn't change at all when she looks into the bag. Oh, I can't eat oranges this hour. It does not work very well with feet. That's alright. I'll do it. Of course I knew that. She told me herself after all. I extract the tiny fruit knife I had with me and select one round of fruits. After making the initial cut, I began to peel with my fingers. The song set of cut orange rind immediately fills the air as the thousands of tiny droplets of oil burst from the skin. I removed the first section of the hard peel and instead a glance at Rin. So, how's the work going? I don't know. It's like I'm in the center of some huge mountain on a jelly and have to dig my way out. Must be stressful. I think it might be. Even though it's just painting all this, everything feels really strange. I wonder if Rin is the kind of person that likes to carefully move all the white fibrous stuff from oranges before eating them, or the more type is eats them as I can. Maybe neither. I'm the formal type, so I meticulously clean the orange slices one by one while Rin watches the process with mild curiosity. 
I realize that I don't have the faintest idea about her likes or dislikes or any of the little details that make up the concept of a person for those around them. It's like in all this time I haven't learned much about her at all. Once I've finished lim limiting the fact, I realize I've cleaned the entire or neatly split into slices. I'll hold the slice up, bring it close to the ridge so you can pick it up. Here. Oh, Oh, this is so cute! <laughs> She takes it directly between her lips and then into her mouth whole. Her lower lip briefly brushes against my fingertip. Rin chews the slice carefully, savoring it as much as possible. I become fixated on the movements of her jaw, the trickle of juice glistening on her lip, the way her throat moves when she swallows the orange slice. After <laughs> she's like, <laughs> after I realize what I'm doing, I turn away, feeling embarrassed at watching her so intently. It's not the same as it usually is. The orange painting. Oh, was well, is anything like that ever the same? It is sometimes, I think. I don't know what though. I might be starting to paint differently soon if this goes on. Well, wouldn't that just be the change you keep talking about? She thinks about it, blinking her eyes a few times nervously. <laughs> For a moment, absolutely nothing happens at this time itself to the double take. We stare at each other in silence, only that a faint, tangy scent of orange floating between us and the muffled sound of traffic in the background. This is so cute. Then I pick up another slice and hold it to her. She takes it from me with her mouth, just like the first one. I didn't think it would be like this. Well, keep going and see what happens. Not like you can do anything else. Yeah, it's the only thing I can do. After that, she says nothing more. In the ensuing silence, the feed rinse the rest of the orange one slice at a time. Then I peel another for her. Which she eats as well. The third I eat myself and the rest are left in their plastic bag which I put in the small deck next to the couch. I'm scared. She stands up and it turns to her painting with a strange look in her eyes that I haven't seen before. <laughs> like most of her expressions it's completely unreadable. Even if I asked you wouldn't explain what it means. What do I think is happening? I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to go to sleep. We're gonna go a little bit longer, then I gotta sleep because I got work tomorrow. I'm so scared. <laughs> right? Ha! <laughs> Sometimes later, I spot Rin and Say standing together in front of the gallery as I walk down the street toward the gallery. They seem to be talking to each other while Say has a smoke. Good afternoon. I say this even though it's not really afternoon anymore. Oh, gee, what? Is, is it her? Is that. I come back a bit later than usual since I got up after doing my homework. It's going to be dark soon. Hello there, Hassel. Come to visit the little kitten again. Rin makes a face with the nickname. I guess she doesn't like it. Ironically, the way she wrinkles her nose like that really does make her look a bit like a cat. Hello. Sage turns back to Rin to continue the conversation they were having. So in other words, everything is going well enough? Rin makes a difficult expression and turns her face away from me for some reason. It's difficult. It's like I'm missing something, but I will do it. Work hard and it will be fine. I'm going to have to start working on my part of the preparations. I need to do a sales catalog, invitation, decoration, advertisement, and so on. I need the names for your work, so we also need to think of the general theme for the exhibition. They don't have to have. They don't have anything like that. I'm not very good with words, so I don't use them. If I cannot use them, I mean, sometimes I have to, but I think it's not like the time like that at all. You don't like naming your works? I don't like it. Well, I guess it's hard to come up with a good name for something like this. Rain takes her head vehemently. It's not like that. It's like if I paint a cloud and call it octopus, people would think about it differently than if I paint a cloud and call it the end of the world. Every name is wrong. Nothing ever explains what I feel like when I'm, make, when I'm painting. Not, it's not a word thing. The only thing would be come up with new words for everything, but it would help at all? No, I don't think so. Then the paintings would go just unnamed, then born and so on. It's a bit inconvenient, but that's... <laughs> That's no good. A name means that you just didn't come up with a good name. And a name is a name like the Greek guy with the sheep and all. <laughs> she say things about this for a while. Furring her brow, she keeps looking at Rin's serious face. So you're saying your artwork should be completely without labels. I think that's what I'm saying. Say that's not a dry laugh. Like <laughs> the kind of ladies who smoke too much always seem to end up with. <laughs> The Topia art will never end up in a museum. The curators would explode. Oh my gosh. She takes a com contemplative puff of a cigarette, which has worn down not much more than the butt. Then she drops into an ashtray that fixed on the wall next to the door. Then again, it could work. What do you mean? 
This nameless is the rejection of labels. It works. It's a good unifying theme and something people can grasp onto easily. Allows for a lot of room for interpretation and gives a good impression. <laughs> Think about it. All sorts of associations can be made, starting from identity and self definition all the way to whatever you want to think about. We could call your exhibition nameless and build it on that thing. How does that sound? <laughs> Thrin thinks about this for a while. I'm not sure how to say it managed to get so fired up by Rin's reluctance to apply names to her works. <laughs> it feels like she might be extra, extra. I can't talk too much, but it's a pretty impressive sounding idea. I don't think it's a bad idea. For what it's worth, I have to say it sounds pretty good to me, too. Say he reaches into her pocket for another cigarette, lighting it with a very with a neon green retain lighter. <laughs> her forehead wrinkles and she rubs it as she appears at first to think more on this idea. She doesn't say a word for a little bit, but every now and then she takes a sharp drag from the cigarette. <laughs> yes, I think this will work out pretty nicely. <laughs> I'm going to take this as a starting point and work from there. I'm going to work on this. You go back up and try to finish finding your missing ingredient. I'm sure they'll come to you sooner or later. When does it reply? Say takes one last pull from a cigarette and drops in the tray to join the others of its kind. The guy owner turns to head back inside, but is stopped by Rindus as he reaches for the door handle. Say? What is it, kitten? Can I have some cigarettes? <laughs> She looks at Rin and Kratos, like, clearly not having expected such a direct request. Not that I did either. Oh my goodness. Don't tell your teacher! She stuffs the back in Rin's pocket along with the neon green lighter. The day is already unfolding into <laughs> dusk when he climbs up the dark stairs leading up to what is basically Rin's. <laughs> As he go inside, Rin doesn't seem to be able to settle down. She keeps pacing around the room like a caged animal, looking through the sky at the burgundy colored dusk. Let's save again. <laughs> Neon green. Okay. <clears throat> the last light of the sun that advanced across the sky reflects from the clouds floating over the town, filling every corner of the altar with the blazing orange light. So painting is going well. She blinks and relaxes her muscles. I didn't even realize how tense up she was until now. Not really. I haven't painted in three days and going in squares. Circles. If you say so. I tried doing things a bit differently, but it doesn't work. And now the old way doesn't work either. I need something more. It's not enough like this. She's getting burnt out! Rin's response gave me a pause, since as usual, I can't exactly understand what she means. Although really, I shouldn't have expected anything else. She either says nothing at all or too much. Trying to comprehend and follow her train of thought feels like wading through... The juggles of Borneo equipped with a wooden spoon and a map of Hokkaido. <laughs> that sucks. It's annoying how her thoughts are both laid out in plain sight and hidden from view every time she opens her mouth. What more? You still have to say as well. I'm missing a ingredient? <laughs> I think I have to destroy myself? Okay, that sounds unnecessarily grim. What do you mean? Rin showed her slump and she turned her face me directly. I have to change. I've tried, but this is not enough. I have to destroy myself first. I'm like... <laughs> Just to be clear, you're, you're speaking metaphorically, right? Like, learning to paint from scratch again or whatever, so to speak? She shrugs as well as if there's no difference. There is no difference. <laughs> so you're going to start by smoking a cigarette for inspiration? Maybe. I've never tried this before. Have you? No, I can't say I have. <laughs> Still, I'm not really sure if having a smoke is the best starting point. She responds to my words with another nonchalant shrug. I open the cigarette pack and look inside. It's almost full. <laughs> Smoking is bad for you, but that's the idea here, I guess. Yes, I need to do something. I want to paint. I need something more. So, okay, fine. What's after smoking a cigarette, then? How do you intend to destroy yourself? Rin thinks for a split second, running her gaze like she does when she doesn't want to get distracted. I don't know yet. I'll decide later. Rin bends down to pick out a cigarette from the end. <laughs> she raises her head with one between her lips and turns me eyebrows curved to two eyes trying to meet her spawn. Oh god. <laughs> with a sigh of resignation, I pick up the light and raise it to meet the cigarette. <laughs> I can feel Rin's warm breath against my withering hand. The flame flicker. Oh. 
the flame flickers to life on the third strike of the flint and the try to end the dancing flame at the end of the cigarette. The amber-colored glow spreads into the wrapping paper and tobacco. As Rin inhales the first smoke, it seems to relax her significantly. <laughs> the neon green one? <laughs> to my surprise, she doesn't cause by telling me that she's the first timer. Oh no! <laughs> Rin seems to remember that it's hard to blow the smoke out without spinning the cigarette as well. She quickly sits down on the floor, bringing her foot to her lips like a circus contortionist and actually picks the fil filter between the two toes. I get down on the floor as when we both lie down almost simultaneously while Rin blows a steady stream of smoke towards the dim sky beyond the glass of the sky, looking after it thoughtfully. Oh, <laughs> The thin haze of steely blue smoke slithers toward the ceiling like fish movements. Okay. <laughs> oh, interesting. It builds in the stagnant air of the altar, twisting and turning around its own immaterial body until it dissipates in thin air. What's the word for smoke that looks like that? There is no word for that. Well, may we should maybe come up with one. Maybe. But it takes another quick experimental drag. It's not very tasty. It feels like inhaling the dust lying on top of a forgotten book or in the memories of a dead kingdom. Do you want to try? <laughs> My hesitation and intentionally surfaces again, making me freeze in the face of rather trivial and commonplace challenge. Rin's ability to take everything so coolly is something I'm a bit jealous of. Alright. <laughs> this is so funny. Taking it from her, I have a drag on it, fighting against a sudden choking feeling in my lungs they fill with smoke. <laughs> to my embarrassment, I feel wheezing and hacking my lungs out. I feel flushed and may I haven't lost too much face in Rin's eyes. <laughs> it was unpleasant on the second time. I still pass the cigarette back to Rin. We're like a pair of budding delinquents in middle school, sneaking their first milk out of sight of the teachers and parents. Well, I suppose it's not like that's exactly what we are. After a while, the cigarette has shut most of the way down to the filter. Rin is still looking quietly out, out of the skylight. With her looking out there, the sounds inside the altar becomes to deep, begins to deepen even more. Are the cognitive creativity turning behind those eyes right now? Do, do another one! I mechanically pick up another cigarette lighter and place it on Rin's lips. She takes a few quick puffs and moves it awkwardly around her lips. Frank of. <laughs> not, not understanding her garbled words, I glance over at Rin. It looks like she's having trouble with the cigarette. I pick the cigarette from her lips and place it on mine, abandoning common sense and good reason why I do so. The first one should have been enough for me, but I take another drag, still coughing a little at the unpleasant sensation of smoke invading my respiratory organs. I remember doing something like this before. See, half smoke doesn't look like it though. Now I'm lying my back and looking at the sky with you. Oh. The sky on the other side of the glass is slowly growing darker. It's unreachably high even if the shimmering smoke seems to make it closer. I turn the cigarette back to Rin's mouth. It feels bad somehow. The space between us less than our arm reach is still there. It's the distance between us and measurably wide chasm of thoughts and feelings that separates us with a graver certainty than even the light years of physical distance could. By saying the right words, there might be a way to make that chasm narrower, even if it's just by a little. I tried to cross that gap with one big step, but Rin turned me back. I glanced at her out of the corner of my eye. Rin is staring upward through the smoke-filled ceiling and the sky of the darkening sky above us. It's almost like she is sleeping, even though I don't know, she, even though I know she isn't. Her eyes are open and as are her mouth. I take the cigarette from her before it falls on her cheek. She doesn't react to my touch in any way. So, this is where we are now. I wonder if we can ever be closer than this. I take a drag of the cigarette and blow a thin stream of smoke upwards. These indirect kisses are the only thing that connect us right now. The taste of Rin's lips on the filter mixed with the ashen taste of the smoke. Her soft lips against my fingers as I pressed the cigarette on her mouth as she was placing kisses on them. I don't know. The ash slowly falling on the floor between us like snow. Oh my god, dude. As the second cigarette is being finished off, I was already lighting the third one. The only thing breaking the stillness of the altar is the inaudible sound of smoke floating towards the first stars blinking overhead. Light nausea hits me by the fourth, fourth fifth cigarette. He's like, <laughs> Before long, the shape of the waxing moon appears in the skylight, shedding her wan light down on us. It'll be a full moon in a few days. It'd be nice to be able to fly. 
I'm <laughs> I flinched after realizing it was my own voice that gave birth to the remark of the bastard child of the almost intervening smoke and tiredness. You can't? You can? Sometimes I feel like it, like it can do anything. I wish I felt like that too sometimes. I wonder if she hears the bitterness seeping into my words. The vicious cycle of unrequited feelings is poisoning me even now. I try to push, push the grim thoughts aside. My efforts meet with little success as my mind keeps swirling around what ifs and if onlys. Watching the moon slowly creeping higher, I realize that a long time has passed since I came here. It sobers me somewhat, but also reminds me of the sad status quo we're in now. It's like, I better get going back to school. Don't leave! I stand up to leave, but Rin doesn't show any sign of rising up from the floor. She lies in animate as if all life had been sat from her. Little wisps of smoke float about our memories of the cigarettes we shared. I grasp her by her short and thin arm and try to pull her up. To my surprise, she complies and stands up with some help from me. I notice how little Rin weighs that she was made of feathers. Are you going to stay here overnight? I have to. I haven't painted much in three days. I have to find out how I can't start painting. Maybe the smoke helps. Just take a break? That's no good. I have to do it. If I can't paint anymore, I will, have, I will be destroyed for real. Maybe I just burned out. You've been working pretty hard. So I said. That would be bad. I wonder if this is for me. I want to see how far I can go. Maybe this is it. This is the end. You just have artist block. It's not a big deal. That's the worst when you can't paint, right? <clears throat> I've had that before. Never like this, though. I pick up a brush and I want to put it down right away. And then I do. Three days. It's like I've forgotten how to paint. I didn't think that was possible. Like, more impossible than Emmy growing wings and a tail. You need a break. I mean, I get what you're trying to go. I get you're trying to go deeper inside yourself for your paintings, but it's really not that healthy to stay inside your own head for so long. I glance at the night sky visible through the window. A couple of stars are weakly twinkling above the city. They remind me of something I used to do once upon a time. It feels so horribly long ago. Come on, let's go outside. Where? Just for a walk. I'll show you my secret place. I don't know if it works in this town, but we can try. In any case, you need a break and probably something to eat. Come on. You need to get your thoughts away from this for a while. When they're troubled, most people escape from their unhappy lives into a world of fantasy. I did that before and still do today, reading books endlessly, immersing myself in their world rather than my own. Where's escape to be the other way around, though, out of her inner world and into the real? <laughs> Rin doesn't look happy about this, but I ignore her. <clears throat> At least she's somewhat cooperative, walking after me as we head down the stairs and down the sidewalk. That has fallen upon the town. It's a gentle summer night, smelling of flowers and hot asphalt. The sunlight is replaced by shining neon colors and bland yellow streetlights. The air is easy to breathe as the air pressure is noticeably lighter than usual. The feeling of daytime in the hot summer has lasted long into the evening and night. I grab Rin by her sleeve like I've seen Emmy do, and to my surprise, she obediently follows. The pale streetlights fight against the all-enveloping darkness as we walk together. The guide and the guide of the needle knows the destination. But it doesn't matter. This is the month, one month where the usual signs have become a ritual between us, me and Rin at last fits perfectly. We walk side by side, choosing directions on impulse or inspiration. Sometimes we find ourselves back at a street we'd already seen once or twice. Sometimes we find new streets. All of them look asleep. Rin doesn't ask where we're going. Maybe she doesn't care. <clears throat> Maybe she knows I don't have an answer. The silence of the night isn't scary. I know the lights drive most of it away. The air grows cooler as the wind progresses along its journey on the cloudless sky. Few cars roam the streets at this hour. Even fewer people are on the sidewalk. The apparent lack of nocturnal life is somehow befitting of this place. <clears throat> there are around-the-clock shops and cafes, sure, but the atmosphere is like a town that's almost slumbering. A town that sleeps eight hours a day. The city I grew up in, bathed in the electric glow of a million light bulbs, never slept. I have seen it for myself. It's not the first I've done this. It happened all one of the times I was home alone. Well, <laughs> both my parents had business trips that neither could cancel. They deemed me old enough to start two days on my own. <laughs> oh, the misplaced trust me and did not go to waste. I proceeded to spend the entire night walking around the city. <laughs> Even afterward, I couldn't say what made me stay downtown longer than I attended at the school. I didn't feel like going home, so I stayed through the evening and eventually through the entire night. As I walked, I walked through concentric circles around a landmark chosen at ram random. For some reason, the nighttime city felt fascinating, so I walked the streets. As every intersection in it was possible to choose a direction at random because they all led nowhere. 
The aimless wandering made me feel see, see made me see things differently. I hope I'll do the same for Rin. I'm struggling. We stopped to buy some hot coffee and snacks from a vending machine and then locate a branch where we sit down to eat. There's no time in the night of the town. So we spent an unknown amount of it sitting there, observing the stillness of an usually, usually vivid townscape. Still, it's getting very early, and soon it'll be getting very early. So is this it? Hearing Rin's voice surprises me. She doesn't sound bored. <laughs> Rather, her tone is inquisitive, uncertain as to why I dragged her out here, yet curious to find out the answer. Yeah, have you ever been out all night? It's like a different world. The remark sends her thinking for a while, looking around as she's looking for something. The wisp of light reflecting around from the corners of her eyes are suddenly very sharp. It's not a different world, it's just the same. Just asleep. What do you think this town is dreaming of? Maybe something like car sheep or building sheep? Why are dreams always about sheep? I've never seen this sh sheep laid a dream that I can remember. Do different towns dream of different things? Probably. How could they not? <clears throat> I answer half joking, half spurring her on. For the first time tonight, it seems like a bit of Rin's life has returned to her. She doesn't continue her list of rhetorical questions. <laughs> yes. Though instead she leans back a little and looks up at the moon traveling across the town. The cool breeze blowing through the building seems to steal the real so the conversation away before it even really begins. It's too bad. It looked like Rin would get out of her blue mood. I wish I could somehow know the right thing to say, but I realize I can't do that the way I am now. And too far apart from Rin, I haven't really managed to crack her open. She's just too complicated. It's like she's open to everything, especially equally disinterested in everything from the outset. In truth, she's locked tighter than anyone else I know, even myself. Sometimes she likes herself inside the inner world, shutting everyone else out. Other times her thoughts flow freely from her mind, but not organized in any fashion that would make them intelligible for the rest of the world. What comes out in the form of painting that I can't interpret. To me, she's a sea of colors and shapes, not a message. She's too far away. I know now it was a bad idea to try to reach for her in the way I did, but I can't help liking her. Oh my gosh. I look at the fingers of my right hand, trying to remember what Ren's lips feel like against them. Do you ever feel like you're trying to reach out for something that is impossible to reach? Huh? Ren turns her gaze to me, tilting her head quizzically. I wonder if she understands the meaning of my own rhetorical questions or not. Either way, I like how I can manage to catch her chest and just by speaking aloud nowadays. All the time. Oh, at least I think so. That's what painting feels like a lot of the time. Or all the time. I don't know. Sometimes I get the feeling that I can really paint what I want. Sometimes it feels like there's another shadow in me, like a mirror that doesn't work right. Like talking? Maybe. When I was little, I didn't really have friends. Maybe it's the same now. <sighs> the only thing I liked were pens and paints. They were the only things that understood me. Now I feel like that's going away too. Change really is a scary thing. I wish I could understand you. She looks at me melancholically, roused by my thoughts, materializing his words spoken aloud. Me too. Whether she meant she wished me to understand her, her to understand me, or her to understand herself, I never asked, nor do I find out. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna cry. See, I see her eyes searching for mine. Seriously, cryptic as they are, I'm not getting any expression from there. Don't worry about it. I will. Small hands of a smile wavering on her lips. When she's like this, it makes it feel like maybe there's hope for us. We get along so well for being so different. It's just that we never really get along precisely because we are so different. <clears throat> maybe it was Rin's passionate approach to her own art expedition, exhibition, or maybe my own careless words, but last week was different from usual. The small friction between us seems to be almost volatile, but at least now we seem to be back to normal, relatively speaking. We stand up from a bench and pick another direction in which to go. The wee hours of the night slowly pass by as we measure the streets of the town one step at a time. We are finally at ease, not minding the rare lone pathway, but the eerie darkness each other ourselves. <clears throat> Rin, oh my god, my back, hold on. Okay. Rin's steps seem lighter, like the heavy air around her is letting go a little. It makes me feel happy. We don't talk, save for the single remarks that have spoken to the night of the town, never answered. The details jump into the eye of instead of being the usual boy there during the day. As the sky above the town changes from deep, deep dark blue to gray, I know that our night is soon ending. It's almost morning. Wind looks up to and nods at me. It's true, though the coming light of morning is creeping through the sky, climbing higher than the minute. It feels surreal. <clears throat> the sun won't come up for a while, but I get the feeling that the end of this night really is here and now. Should we head back? Wind nods again, twice her hair waving in the breeze that seems to be heralding the coming dawn. 
Abruptly, she takes off, taking the lead in this walkabout in which I brought her. It seems she really is in a better mood. This, too, makes me feel happy. Rin's navigational skills are probably not much better than mine, but we eventually find ourselves in front of Sage's place. I don't know if this was any help. I did this once before, but it was more because of my stupid impulse that made me restless and suspect then. Maybe this is a silly idea that didn't really help you at all. She just nods an answer. So, do you know how you're going to destroy yourself now? I have some ideas. I don't want you to- I don't want to see you for a while! Don't come and see me. Do something else. Her ultimatum catches me completely off guard. No! What the hell? What's that about? You said before you didn't mind. I mind now. It's just for a while. I have to do this alone. I don't like that. Why? I don't want to go, go like this. Did I get a bad ending? Oh my god, no! Why? I just don't want to feel the distance between you and me. She tilts her head like a bird, her eyes narrowing a little as she thinks. Then you can touch me. What? You can touch me if you want. You feel better, right? I don't know. Try. Where do you want me to touch you? <laughs> no boobs are left here. Other than that, you can decide. Fine. I raise my hand hesitantly, but I don't know where I'm, exactly I'm doing this. Her eyes told me that she's not going to explain. A thousand thoughts race through my head. <laughs> not my left ear. As I slowly bring my hand closer to Rin's face and press two fingers against her pale cheek. Rin feels soft and cold. <laughs> she closes her eyes on contact and visibly reacts his. I can feel her soft breathing, her muscles releasing tension as my fingertips caress her cheek. She doesn't rest her head against my palm or anything else to expect to go in this sort of situation. Yes, definitely. In fact, she hasn't reacted at all, save for those now shut eyes. Once I withdraw my hand, she opens it again. It might just be an illusion created by the timid morning sunlight playing with my eyes, but really like she's holding back a smile. This is the problem with our relationship. Half the time I have no idea what's going on. Other half I just fail to understand why things are going on like they are. As usual, I'm not going to get an explanation. Rin really takes a step towards the door. See you later. This disappears my range for an undefined period of time. I gotta go to sleep, guys! This is so intense, so Oh my god. Okay. Okay, I, I I really gotta go to sleep, guys. This is What's this? Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great night. I'll be I should be able to return Thursday, I think. But yeah, thank you guys.